beautiful souls welcome welcome this is twani here and i hope you are doing lovely today so let's tune into conscious relationships today i would like to share with you something about the blockages of the heart chakra Now before I jump on to the blockages I would like to share with you certain aspects of the heart chakra The anahata is at the middle of the seven chakras it's the fourth chakra The heart unites the physical and spiritual chakras serving as a bridge between our mind body emotions and spirit so when your heart is open you're flowing with love acceptance and compassion the heart chakra flows with love for ourselves others the world around us It's where our spirit resides and is the most important chakra to keep clear and flowing with ease. Now it works on four major principles. First is I listen to my heart and honor its feelings. Second, I love myself and others fearlessly. Third, I allow myself to heal. Fourth, I choose to be kind and forgiving to myself and everyone and everything. Now, what is the symbolic element of this anahata? It is a uh, it is a a hexagram uh, the hexagram within the heart chakra symbol is made of two interlaced triangles one pointing up and one pointing down a downward movement of spirit into matter symbolizes shakti which is a feminine principle the divine feminine within us and the upward liberation of matter into spirit symbolizes shiva which is a masculine principle or the divine masculine within us these two meeting together at heart where true balance is attained each one of the 12 petals is inscribed a sanskrit syllable kam kham gam gham gnam cham cham jam jham nyam tam and tham these represent uh certain characteristics within us like lustfulness fraudulence indecision repentance hope anxiety longing impartiality arrogance incompetence discrimination and defiance now in order to balance our heart chakra we have to work through all these 12 characteristics specifically now the main aspect one of the main aspect of the heart chakra is the element of air right as i mentioned in my previous episode air is pure consciousness It is with you every moment of your waking life constantly 
shaping and influencing your realities right just like air consciousness also is forever attempting to move into new areas and seek out new information and experiences just like air it is not always visible to us but it is always there with us just like that consciousness is also not visible to us but it is always there within us air is only visible when it's directed through another element right uh we can witness its power by combining elemental forces like when air is combined with fire air is its its presence is visible for example when we burn sage and incense we can see the presence of air right when air is combined with earth for example if we hang a metal wind chime or earth element it makes noise which uh, shows us the presence of air right when air is combined with water for example if we vaporize and mist essential oils we can feel its fragrance right that is the presence of air now the second important aspect is to love and be loved mm. you do you understand the word affinity affinity is a term used in chemistry to des- describe the tendency of one substance to enter into and remain in combination with another substance this occurs because of an intrinsic fit within the atomic structure of the substance those of you who are aware or who like chemistry must be knowing this the result of affinity is bonding right when two substances with affinity for each other come together they bond forming a more permanent connection each has something the other is lacking on a simplified level it is the attraction of opposites seeking to balance themselves human bonding is so similar to chemical bonding that we often refer to it as chemistry hm um if you see the symbol of yin and yang it shows a perfect chemistry perfect balance between the feminine and the masculine we may not always understand why we feel drawn towards someone <laughs> but the feeling is there right nonetheless and it is often irresistible most often the person has something in his or her energy field that we want need or desire if we are lucky we have something they need too and a bonding can occur good for the duration of the affinity feelings <laughs> now as the heart chakra is the center of balance it is fitting that love itself arises initially out of a natural tendency to merge and balance out energy with other living creatures self acceptance is our first chance to practice unconditional love it doesn't mean that we have to give up striving to be better but that of a self love is not conditional on the future or imagined or expected change 
when we feel unconditional love for ourselves within our heart it becomes easier and natural to accept others affinity is also seen as a vibrational quality when we are in affinity the harmonious state we feel give coherency to every thing we say or do when we radiate love within us in turn we harmonize our surroundings now i will move to the blockage of the heart chakra now how do you know that your heart chakra can be imbalanced or blocked just ask yourself certain questions uh do you suffer from pain or any disorders with the lungs thymus heart breasts or arms do you get tension between your shoulder blades or pain in your chest do you get jealous easily and don't even know how why sometimes right do you ever get accused of being clingy or dependent do you ever feel you over sacrifice for those around you you give too much of yourself do you struggle with keeping healthy and long relationships do you sometimes feel lonely depressed or critical has anyone betrayed you recently or in past do you sometimes fear intimacy and or relationships you have resistance towards intimacy or relationships do you ever struggle to feel compassion for those with insecurities or struggles if your answer is yes to more than one of these you may have some balancing to do this is how our heart communicates with us it's our job to listen for the signals and then act upon it right now one of the major a clear sign that our heart chakra can be blocked is a profound feeling of grief and angst coupled with a miserable feeling of apathy and in new means a uh, lack of interest and uh, a feeling of dissatisfaction arising from a lack of excitement we must embrace pain and burn it as fuel for our journey as said by kenji miyazawa now this often happens grief generally happens due to uh, love lost failure in relationships a death in the family unmet expectations and or an inability to let go of the ego's attachment to love we experience a lack of empathy on the emotional level and a lack of openness and flexibility on the spiritual level we have trouble loving ourselves and we become afraid to be vulnerable with others in the fear of getting hurt right when we are blocked by grief we are actually blocked by our ego's attachment 
to the way things could have been. <laughs> we had certain idea of certain relationship that it should have turned out something like this, but it did not. You know, there's a lot of if only and shoulda, woulda, coulda. We become so wrapped up in the misery of having lost something that we forget about the only moment in which anything can truly be gained. That is the present moment. Now, just ask yourself, are you experiencing these conditions like resentment and hatred of or towards other people or towards ourselves sometimes or lack of fulfilling relationships, stinginess, suspicion, uh, paranoia, doubts, lack of trust, trusting other people, trusting uh, ourselves, jealousy, lack of empathy, cold-heartedness, distancing, you know, aggression and passive aggression, like shutting down, putting up walls, guarding ourselves or self-victimization and martyrdom, loneliness, isolation, possessiveness, grudge holding, melancholy, mood swings, sadness, depression, trust issues and physical heart issues like high blood pressure, etc. When our heart chakra is balanced, we generally feel compassionate, love, empathetic, self-loving, altruistic, means thinking of others, peaceful, balanced and also good immune system and we have when we have an imbalanced heart chakra in there in that there is there are two conditions deficient and excessive when we have we are in the deficient mode we are generally antisocial withdrawn cold critical judgmental, intolerant of self or others, loneliness, isolation, depression, fear of intimacy, fear of relationships, lack of empathy, even narcissism in extreme cases. When we have, we are, when we are in the excessive mode, we can um, experience codependency. We have poor boundaries. We do not, uh, we are not able to say no when we are required to, when we are uncomfortable. And we are demanding, we are clinging to a person or to an idea or to a concept or to an expectation. We, we feel jealous or we are overly sacrificing. Uh, there are certain physical malfunctions like disorders of the heart, lungs, thymus, breasts and arms, shortness of breath, sunken chest, circulation problems, asthma, immune system deficiency, tension between shoulder blades, pain in chest, 
if you experience all of this understand that you need to work upon your heart chakra now talking about transforming the heart chakra the fourth plane our fourth subtle body out of the seven subtle bodies is the mental body right or the psyche uh before moving further i would like you to um visit my episode about the seven subtle bodies it will help you to better understand this topic okay so the fourth plane is the mental body or the psyche and the fourth chakra the anahata is connected with the fourth body the natural qualities of this plane are imagination and dreaming this is what the mind is always doing right imagining and dreaming it dreams in the night and in the daytime it daydreams if imagination is fully developed that is to say if it is developed to its fullest extent in a complete way it becomes determination will if dreaming develops fully it is transformed into vision psychic vision if a man's ability to dream is fully developed he has only to close his eyes and he can see things this is what uh, psychic do right he can then see even through a wall through a guard at first he only dreams of seeing beyond the wall later he actually sees beyond the wall now he can only guess what you're thinking but after the transformation he sees what you think vision means seeing and hearing things without the use of the usual sense organs and the limitations of time and space are no more for a person who develops vision time and space is just an illusion in dreams you travel far if you are in bombay you can reach kolkata in vision also you can travel distances even time spans but there will be a difference in dreams you imagine you have gone whereas in vision you actually go your mental body actually goes in that time frame or in that space frame the fourth psychic body can actually be present there as we have no idea of the ultimate possibility of this fourth body we have discarded the ancient concept of dreams in today's world the ancient experience was that in dream one of the bodies of man comes out of him and goes on a journey in certain cultures dreaming is considered as very important especially uh those uh, you know tribes living in jungles and connected to their ancient ancestors there was a man swedenborg whom people knew as a dreamer he used to talk of heaven and hell 
and that they can only exist in dreams. But one afternoon, as he slept, he began to shout, Help! Help! My house is on fire! People came running, but there was no fire there. They awoke him to assure him that it was only a dream and there was no danger of fire. He insisted, however, that his house was on fire. His house was 300 miles away and it had caught fire at that time. On the second or third day, news came of this disaster. His house was burned to ashes and it was actually burning when he cried out in his sleep. Now, this is no longer a dream, but a vision. The distance of 300 miles was no longer there. This man witnessed what was happening 300 miles away. Now, scientists also agree that there are great psychic possibilities of the fourth body. Now that man has set out in space, research in this direction has become all the more important in occult sciences. The fact remains that no matter how reliable the instruments at man's disposal, these cannot be relied upon completely. If the radio communication in a spaceship ceases to function, the astronauts lose contact with the world for all time, right? They will not be able to tell us where they are or what has happened to them. So, today scientists are keen to develop telepathy and vision of the psychic body to overcome this risk. If the astronauts were able to communicate directly with the power of telepathy, it would be a part of the development of the fourth body. Then space travel can be very safe. A lot of work has been carried out in this direction. In the 1900s, a U.S. Navy engineer, Robert Perry, and a Matthew Alexander Henson, who was an American, uh, sorry, African American explorer, set out to explore the North Pole for the first time. Now there are many controversies, but this is what is claimed by them. Now they were equipped with all that was necessary for wireless communication. But one more arrangement was also made, which is not made known up till now. A psychic person whose fourth body faculties were functioning was also made to receive the transmission from the explorers. The most surprising thing was that when there was bad weather, the wireless failed. But the psychic person received the news without any difficulty. When the diaries were compared later on, it was found that 80 to 95 percent of the time, the signals received by the psychic person were correct. Whereas the news relayed by the radio was not available more than 72 percent of the time because there were many breakdowns and bad weather and all. Now, Russia and America were both very eager and a great deal of work is going on in the field of telepathy, clairvoyance, thought projection, thought reading. All these are the possibilities of the fourth body. To dream is its natural quality. To see the truth, to see the real, 
is its ultimate possibility. And anahata is the chakra of this fourth body. Well, that was all for now. So stay tuned till my next episode. The purpose is to share and spread love. God bless you in your beautiful journey of life. And please share this episode so that more and more people can benefit. And click the subscribe button and especially the bell icon for my YouTube viewers so that you get notified every time I upload a new episode. And you're more than welcome to join our Facebook group, Cautious Relationships, or follow me on Instagram, Cautious.Relationships. The link is in the description box below or in the about section. Okay, so I'll leave you with that. Thank you so much for listening and have a good time. Bye-bye.